Brakati Yahawa, Brakati Yahawa Shai, Brakati Yahawa, Brakati Yahawa Shai, Brakati Yahawa, Brakati Yahawa Bashim Yahawa Shai, Bahashim, Raka Akudash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone Shuvel. Salutations to the whole for the elect out there, you Akim to Zadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. I'm the priest Shaman. This week's topic is going to be entitled Jake is more Greek than the Greeks. And the inspiration for the show comes from the fact that I was looking at this uh, picture here that was put up on Phil Town, uh, Phil Town, um, Phil Heath's Instagram, and uh, pretty much the upcoming Olympia 2020. And I'm looking at the cover, and I see none but Israelites. Now I don't know if the woman on the far left, to the bottom, is an Israelite or not. She could be a Latin tribe Jake, but you can see a top a Jake woman in the middle. You got Phil Town, seven-time Miss Olympia. To the right, current reign in Mr. Olympia, and all these guys are Israelites. And this whole bodybuilding thing, Jake just pretty much took it over. But this is a very heathenistic thing, you know? Posing pretty much naked and all this type of stuff. That's very heathenistic. Now, you know, you have certain brothers that watch this thing. Um, nothing wrong with that. Look, the Apostle Paul, he was into what? Shadow boxing. He mentions wrestling. He mentions the, the 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 marathon race. These things were not practice. They were practiced pretty much half naked back then, anyways. But that doesn't mean that the apostle Paul got all into that, you know. So you know, brothers do the exercise thing and might be into strength, might be into power, might be into bodybuilding, you know. Hey, the scriptures say uh, bodily exercise profiteth little. It didn't say it didn't profit nothing. It profited little, right? So. Hey, it's cool to exercise, man. I'd, I'd, I'd definitely recommend brothers exercise, man. Um, if you have a if you have a phone that has five percent battery, <laughs> that's gonna profit you little, but it's still gonna profit you something. You can make a call, you could do things. Anyways, um, yeah, our people adopted the ways of the heathens and become even more and surpass the heathens at the things that they do. Now you're always gonna have genetically superior Israelites out there. Because we have that God gene, so to speak, that on a low level, you know, Jake taps into some form of spiritual power, man. Because what these individuals are doing, even though they're on gear and shit like that, not, you know, genetically speaking, not everybody could do this. You know, just because you pop some steroids, which is completely off, that not mean you're going to look like these guys. You know, they, you have like what you call like super Jakes, man. <laughs> like when you read the book of Judges and, you know... The heathens will put us in subjection. Then the most side ra raise up this like super Jake. You know, that will sort of deliver us. Like you look at LeBron, Michael Jordan, these guys are super Jake. Mean meaning you have people that play basketball. You have Jakes that are talented at basketball. But these are guys are just on a super level with it, man. Not everybody's built the same. You know, you have certain Jakes that just. That got that that that, that little extra oof that the most side gave them. Not to bat, not to uh, deviate too much. Uh, <laughs> hey, we be training, right? And the priest Palau, he's like that man. This this brother, he could take a month, two months off, and a few weeks in the gym, he's lifting with the best of them, man. It's just God given power like that. You have this one brother that raced in the camp, brother just God given speed, man. So so you know, it's just like Jake as a whole. Our people, we just on another level. And even with in a, in, even within our people, there's jakes that are on some super level amongst our people, man. Anyway, without further ado, let me get into some scriptures. This is First Maccabees, the first chapter, and the thirteenth verse. It says, "Then certain of the people were so forward." Hold on. First uh, Maccabees one and eleven. It says, in those days when there are is out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from then, we have had much sorrow. So you're always going to have Israelites that deviate from the Most High and our customs to go after the way of the heathens. You know? It says, so this device pleased them well, these wicked niggas. Verse 13, then certain of the people were so forward herein 
that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathens right so this is jake being more heathenistic than the heathens man and you see jake's like that like um man i was watching this one calisthenic video this dude does a lot of calisthenics and his introduction he's speaking like some type of uh islamic language and he's speaking that shit so fluently like he's just so like you know he's so above and beyond with it that you just not even surprised like that's what jake do and i don't know why people stumble at this man the fact that look you had israelites in europe what's so deep about that i mean not to sound proud but i don't hey but you know what is the most side that made it plain to us you know that our people were scattered and all over okay we adopted heathenistic customs to the point that we was calling ourselves heathens and trying to be even above the heathens at their own culture and guess what on the opposite opposite end you had people that adopted our culture and running around with calling themselves israelites man just like how you have today the so-called jew sway up and down that he's the people of the lord well this is not there's nothing new under the sun all right these are all reoccurring things and i'm going to prove both sides that you had our people that were far far out into the heathenistic customs and you have people that adopted our customs so far as even um at the time of the apostle paul you had a lot of israelites that didn't even know who the real edomites were and the apostle to had mentioned that it says uh verse 14 wherefore it says whereupon they built a place of exercise at jerusalem according to the customs of the heathens and this is your modern name gymnasium all right gymnos goes back to the word naked in, in fact when you go in these gyms today these women are pretty much practically naked but you don't go into the gym with a bunch of clothes on and covered up or in any modest apparel hey man i saw this one woman it was silly i guess she was from the middle east she had the hijab on but then she had leggings on so it's just like you know what i'm saying it's just it was just like something that canceled itself out you know you go in the gym people are wearing leggings a lot of these women um you know they're wearing leggings with no panties under you know it's just it's very revealing but really this is this this is really distasteful in the eyes of the most high and should be in the, should be in the eyes of us as well it says you know you look at these bodybuilders they pretty much go on stage with a goddamn g-string on man <clears throat> and you got these women with manly ass features look man hate it or love it gender roles are a thing gender roles are set up by the most high there's certain things that men shouldn't do that women doing certain things that women do that men shouldn't do but yet in this society they're trying to cross the line in between man and this is why you have the you know the females on the left pretty much looking androgynous to the point they have what looks like a feminine face and long hair but then masculine you know their tits almost look flat man they, their tits pretty much do look flat because for you to hit like a pectoral pose you need a lot of mu muscles in your chest man so they they do pretty much all their femininity out of there and just try to keep their face feminine it's, you know it's really androgynous man but at the head of the poster it's all israelites and israelites are dominating man even in wickedness our people exceed it says um it says whereupon they built a place of exercise at jerusalem to the customs of the heathen heathen and made themselves uncircumcised and this this was literal man it was doing some type of procedure this is in the uh secular history believe in the josephus but i've seen it in secular history where jakes were doing some sort of reverse circumcision meaning they were they got they were born got circumcised on the eighth day grew up and did some shit to put foreskin back on their rods man so you can't tell me that's not jake going above and beyond to surpass the heathens at their own thing because the heathens frowned upon circumcision you know what i'm saying so jake to fit in to be with them you know again adopted you know pretty much their philosophy in ways look at this jake in the middle he's bald man and you know you're not supposed to be bald phil heath he's bald being baldness is is you're not supposed to be bald according to the scriptures you know putting razors to your head like that it says um whereupon they built a place of exercise at jerusalem according to the custom of the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief so 
our people, this is nothing new with them, you know, to really, whatever heathenistic thing that is, is, is held in esteem, because you look at basketball, you look at these different things, there was a lot of things that Jake was, when it first started, baseball, you know, it was the so-called white man sport, you know, segregation was going on, but the moment Israelites got in there, and that God gene touched that sport, whatever, whatever it might be, whether it's bodybuilding, whether it's gymnasts, you know, Simone Biles, whether it's basketball, anything, you put your mind to it, when Jake get into it, they they go above and beyond. They they you know they super exceed, man. Again, we have that we have that God gene, man. A low level spiritual power within our people. You know, you try to cook like you know you try to cook some rice, and the flame is super super low. It's like yeah, it's still heating the pot, but it's so it's so low. You know, that's us now. But but when the time comes, the most high is gonna pretty much turn the knob up. You know, on our spiritual power and just cook rice and like. You know, 10 minutes, the type of spiritual power we're going to have, man. But yeah, you have Israelites that have that on a low level now. Now, this is what I want to read. I want to read the book of Acts, the sixth chapter in the first verse. It says, and in those days, the number of the disciples were multiplied. was multiplied. There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Now, it says the Grecians and the Hebrews. And this is a King James Version. But I'm sure if you go to other versions... For comparison's sake and just for edification's sake, I'm not saying go to these Bibles, make them your main Bibles, but just for the sake of edification, we're going to look at uh, some other versions, right, of this particular passage. Now, this one says, Now in these days, when the number of the disciples were multiplying, there arose a murmuring of the note Grecian Jews against the Hebrews. See? So you had Greek, this one even, Greek Jews, the BBE got Greek Jews. Uh, Hellenist, you know, you have Hellenins and you have Hellenistas. Okay, so pretty much you had, look at this, another one, Grecian Jews. Really, it's just Greek-speaking Jews, man. Because our people were scattered. And, you know, when we get settled in one place, we get complacent, we pick up the language, and we sort of not teach our kids. And that only takes a few generations to happen. You know, it could happen in two generations where a, a, the grandkid pretty much forgets the whole language if you don't keep it up. And the customs. And we had that amongst our people. So you had a lot of Greek-speaking Israelites that didn't know any Hebrew. That's how come the whole Septuagint was put together, man, because um, the the history of the Septuagint is, you know, they said it was 70, some say 72, six uh, elders out of each respective tribe which were out to 72, pretty much converted the um the Old Testament into Greek. Because under the Persian uh rulership, the the rulership that was prior to the Greeks, you know, these these provinces were still speaking their own respective languages. And you had Jake scattered all throughout those provinces. But now when Alexander conquered, he said, nah, fuck that. I want the whole world speaking Greek. I want the whole the whole world Hellenized, man, which Helen is the Greek way of saying Greek, man. All right? So he wanted to make everybody Hellenins, man. And that and our people uh succumbed to that. That was the only language. And when you look it up in the annals, you had 70% of Alexandria Greek was Alexandria Egypt was made up of what? Jews, man. So you had our people scattered all over heavy in the Greek language, man. You know? I was doing I was looking up this one um cuz Esau studies all this stuff, man. And they had this one seminar where they were bringing out documents of Jake's doing plays in Egypt, all right? Plays in Egypt in the amphitheater of us crossing the Red Sea or the uh, Gulf of Suez, you know? Pretty much recreating all these Old Testament events in the amphitheaters, man. So if, if this man had the power, you know, and this place was to continue, there was, there was no, there's nothing that will stop him from saying Phil Heath and these dudes are all Edomites. You know, when really our people always arose to some type of power, but they try to cover that history just like they're doing today now. Taking down statues, destroy that st statue, take down this slave master. And you don't want that really, man, because when you're able to destroy history, you have now the ability to rewrite it. You know, and that's what the so-called white man has done. <clears throat> you know, uh, scriptures speak about how, he, you know, pretty much takes a man's heritage. Let me see. 
Jews says, and at that is his easy English version. At that time, more and more people every day became believers in Yahweh Shai. Some Jews in Jerusalem spoke Greek language. Yeah, so pretty much, see, Grecian Jews, Greek, Grecian Jews. That's pretty much what you're going to be seeing here. This one actually says the Hellenist against the Hebrews, Hellenistic Jews against the Hebraic Jews. So I don't, I don't know why this is a big stumbling block, but that's the most I anyways making it a stumbling block for these people that they should not receive it. That what you had Jake's that were into a heathenistic Gentile mindset, man. You have the natural Gentiles, which are the other 17 nations, and you have the unnatural Gentiles, which are these Israelites that adopt heathenistic customs. And not only do they adopt them, they go above and beyond with them, man, as you can see in the picture above. You know, this is this is not something that our people will practice. But these are these jakes that will go off into heathenistic things and do it, man. You know? Again, I don't know of anybody body out there, any brother out there doing this bodybuilding thing as a career. If you're doing if you're doing so, uh shit, get your bread. You know what I'm saying? You gotta take care of your family and all that. But I'm just saying, for the sake of the lesson, okay, that um Man, this is some, you know, we shouldn't be doing this, man. You know, if, they, if you have another way out, man, to make bread, I would, you shouldn't be doing this, you know, it's, it's heathenistic. Um, now I wanted to make a point that you had certain, uh, heathens that adopted our, our customs and were walking around calling themselves Jews. Very similar things happened with the Samaritan, right? The Samaritan spoke, said that David was her forefather when really those were implants, all right? They were implanted into the land of uh, Israel during the Assyrian captivity because the Assyrians had this uh, 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 strategy to quell uh, revolts by what? By deporting and importing different nations and mingling them up so the, the people can't understand each other and a less likely chance of a revolt. And, and in one of those... Um, scenarios, all right, he took Hosea, the last king of the northern kingdom, exported him out of the land of Israel, okay, out of the northern kingdom, okay, and implanted um, heathens in there, man, and he wasn't the only one that did that, Sheridan did that, all right, you have different Assyrian kings that did that, man, okay, and um, so you had heathens that and it tells it and it speaks about this in the book of Kings that started to keep our laws, statutes, and commandments as to not face the curses of the land. Now, further down in history, further down in history, you had a man by the name of John Harkanius II, all right, which was a descendant of the Maccabees. And what he did was, um, during his rulership, uh, he had the Edomites, which was south of Judah, of Judah, right, south of the kingdom of Judah. All right, when he conquered them, he had them adopt our um customs. All right, and there was this one Edomite, I believe his name was Nicanor or Nicanator. I'm slucky, I'm saying this off the top of the head, but he was the forefather, all right, of the Herodians, and he was an Edomite. But what he did was he fully adopted the customs of our people and he taught our people those customs. I mean, Slaki, he taught his children our customs. All right. So, so far as much that King Herod really believed he was a Jew. All right. And not only that, <clears throat> um, he must have been of a dark skin because uh, they intermarried with the Maccabean line. All right. So, you know, when Jake, uh, whether it's a male or a female, that baby's going to come out pre predominantly for, in most scenarios with heavy Jake features, man. You know, I saw this one. I was on my way after the gym passing through Fairway and I saw this Edomite with his two sons and his two sons look straight up like Jake's man with the, cause they, you know, the mom was a Jake. I didn't, the mom wasn't around, but they had the braids. They had like the braids, like crisscross, you know, the box braids and all that. But if you'd have never seen the father, you would have never known. You'd just think these were light skinned Jake's. All right. So the Herodians adopted our customs so, f so far as much that even a lot of our people around these times didn't know the difference out of, you know, a lot of them just straight up didn't know. You know, that's why the Apostle Paul said, what? The mystery of iniquity. And I'm going to give you an example in the scripture where this takes place. And this is the book of Acts 24 and 24. It says, and after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess. Now, 
I'm going to click this person, Drusilla, real quick. Now, Drusilla, all right, watered by the dew. It says the daughter of Agrippa. And we know that Agrippa was an Edomite. You know, when you go into when you go into these lines, you could do this on your own if you want to have a little or build up your, you know, your history, you know. You see that from the forefathers of Herod, all right, Herod was planting a lot of seeds, man, but Herod believed pretty much that the mother could play a part in making somebody's um determining somebody's genealogy when that's not the case it's whatever the father is you know so, and he went so far as what killing off um daughter uh children he had with miriam man because this guy really thought that the mother played a, a, a significant significant role in determining the genealogy just like the so-called jews today which is not the case all right the book of numbers expressly tell us your father determines whatever you are all right not your looks Okay, not what land you are, whatever your father is, the seed of your pops, whatever your pops is, that's what you are. It says, the daughter of Agrippa, the elder, wife of Felix, the governor of Judea, a most satanious woman. Now, it's a daughter of Agrippa, right? Which is a what? A Herodian. It says, Drusilla, a member of the Herodian family. And this is what I, this is the point I want to make. The scripture calls her a Jewess. Now, why would the scripture call her a Jewess when she wasn't? Because they didn't know at the time. You know, they didn't have, they, they didn't, it was so much uh, uh, generations past of them, of these people, these inbreds coming in our land, adopting our, our ways. And it wasn't until, uh, I believe, Mark Anthony, all right, that gave this guy, um, um, Herod, the title king of the Jews, man. Okay, because there was what there was a there was an uproar there, man. There was a pretty much there was a lot of infighting between the Maccabees, okay, the the, the Hasmoneans, if you will. Uh, so so much that you had, you know, these guys were trying to really take each other out, their lives out, man. All right, attempts on John Arcanius's life, all right, to those of his close close relative, and when it got really out of out of control. Uh, King Herod, he fled to the Romans, okay, for a solution. And the Romans just said, look, you're the king of the Jews. And he ran with that shit, man, okay? Why did why did, why did he want to kill our Lord Yahushua? Because the prophecy said Yahushua was the king of the Jews. So this guy was obsessed with being king of the Jews, man. You know, he had many kids, many children. All right, and one and he's one of the forefathers of Drusilla, which is an Edomite, but yet the scripture says, which was a Jewess. She was not a Jew. So we see in both aspects here of our people adopting the heathenistic customs so for, so so much as them being called Greeks. All right, and we see in the flip side to where the heathens adopt our culture so much that sometimes they got mistaken for Jews. Man, it says. Which was a Jewess, he sent forth, sent for Paul, and heard him concerning the faith in Yahweh Now, just like, um, Felix, which was also a heathen, all right. The apostle Paul had the wisdom to say, um, most noble Festus, and I wish I, you know, wish I could have persuaded you to be a Christian. That don't mean that the apostle Paul was trying to convert them. The man was using wisdom to preserve his life, man. So a simple telltale sign. All right, to not get confused is when you hear anything to deal with salvation and deliverance, that's dealing with the natural Israelites, all right? The natural Israelites and the unnatural Gentiles, those are the only ones that could be saved. The, the Israelites and the Israelites that are into the Gentile state, state of mind that repent, those are the ones, all right, when it comes to salvation. Okay, and if you hear anything about a heathen being saved, all right, that's when you got to fact check things, all right? Is this heathen talking about a natural heathen, okay? Or is it talking about an Israelite that's in a heathen way of life, man? Because as you can see from the picture above, when Jake get into that heathenistic mindset, you can't stop them. You can't tell them shit because they have that God gene. They have that competitiveness, all right? Look, man, ain't nothing wrong with being competitive, man. 
you know we love to push each, push each other you know hey, uh, i mentioned palau or the priest palau earlier and we constantly talking shit trying to make each other better man you know fuck that i'm stronger than you now i'm faster than you dude but we same time we cheering each other on because we want to see we want to push each other because i know if that brother gets better it's only making me better and this is the mindset of israel as a whole on many different aspects man hey how many times the apostles bring up big up the elder out there in south carolina all right and i look at him as an example to put fuel to the fire to do more lessons than the apostles themselves man a lot of brothers be on fire you say shit man i gotta get in this thing i gotta turn the fuck up you know so that's that competitive righteous competitiveness that's in jake man so when jake touched something they want to be the best at it and guess what them being an israelite they do have an advantage to having that god gene man you know it says and after certain days when felix came with his wife drusilla which was a jewess he sent for paul and heard him concerning the faith in yahweh Shai. now that's really all, all i wanted just to prove the point all right um for that particular scenario okay Hey, with that, look, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shah, Bashim, Rakakodash, the blondes to the apostles and the elders, great mills, don't you well, and salutations to the hopeful elect out there, you Akim to Zadakim, that do this thing in the most truth and sincerity, Shalom.